there, kids. How are you doing? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad to have you. By the way, I feel like I should just introduce myself again. I know it's been like, you know, like a bunch of episodes, but maybe there's new kids. Maybe. My name is Ryan Weston Beaver. I was born in Long Beach, California, and I enjoy fishing and yachting. Okay, the, literally the only thing I knew about you was mm -hmm. that your name was Ryan. Well, there we go. Right. Now oh. you know more. Why don't I you introduce do yourself more. to the kids? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm Miss Carrie. That, that's it? That's, that's it. we got a show to do here. You want to re remain mysterious? I, well, I just don't want this to be oh, all about me. Got it, got it. We, there know? is something very important we should be talking about. This is the big week where it's, it's all decided, kids. Huge, oh, huge. Oh, oh my goodness. This is the climax of yes, February. Yes, I cannot. Yeah, more than just February. This is like this is the climax of like months of anticipation no, really, for me personally. It's just February, really, for me. Well, okay. um, you, but you just a nail biter, this. right? Oh my goodness! Our seats? Coming down to the wire is what I'm hoping, oh right? My right? Goodness. I, mean, can I just you want believe, a good game. Can you know you what I'm saying? The result. Wait, what? That's, I'm looking for a good game. I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't care about either one of the teams. Never really. I, Heard of it called a game before, really, Ryan? What are you? It's more Hold of a, on, this it's is an well, event. Okay. It's a, and and the, the, I mean, could you believe the results? I'm just ugh. At this point, so I, disappointed. I, I can't even imagine what you're talking about. I am clearly talking about the Super Bowl. It's today. Wait, what? Oh, it is. Yeah, what were you talking oh. about? What on earth is the thing that's the climax of February? February second, and... Groundhog Day. Oh boy. Obviously. Oh boy. I mean, you you sit in the snow for all these months, mm -hmm. and you're waiting to mm -hmm. find out if the groundhog will see its shadow. You know what? Because if it I does, then it that... goes back into okay. its hole for another yeah. six weeks of kids, winter. Kids, she, she's from Canada. It's very cold up there. I just realized why it's such a big deal for you. That's it is. okay. I get that. So. As much as I'm baffled by the things that you look, I mean, you're, you don't even, did you know the Super Bowl was today? Wait, what are you talking it's a, about? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna talk to her about it while you guys try to wrap your minds around a difficult game. There's... Let's, let, okay. Davido, you do your thing. Okay. I don't understand. NFL what you're football to me. is a really big deal in America. I wish I could see your mouth because I don't understand a word you're oh, saying. Oh, gosh. Oh, you know what? Let's rewind that so you can hear what I actually said. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, that was that was on high speed. Let me try that again on slow speed. This is really taking way too long. Sorry, kids. What's happening, kids? It's me, Mr. Ryan. Oh, I should have said regular speed, not slow speed. Not fast speed, not slow speed, regular speed. In forward with the volume on. Let's try this one last time. What's happening, kids? It's me, Mr. Ryan, and for today's game, I want to see how well you can read my lips. Wow, that was exhausting, but I finally was able to communicate what the game is going to be about today. Kids, all you have to do is read my lips. I'm going to say something, then I'm going to mute the volume. I'll give you a couple seconds to guess, and then your job is to just blurt it out when you think you know what it is. Then I'll play the actual clip again with the volume, and we'll see how you did. I'm gonna try and get into a bunch of these, so buckle your seatbelts because your clue for round one is candy. Sour Patch Kids. Your clue for round two is bird. Road Runner. Your clue for round three is cartoon. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Your clue for round four is fast food. Double double with fries, please. 
Your clue for round five is vacation. I want to go to Hawaii. Our clue for round six is sports. Take me out to the ball game. The clue for round seven is song. Happy birthday to you. The clue for round eight is snacks. Flaming Hot Cheetos. The clue for round nine is question. Why did the chicken cross the road? The clue for round 10 is once again question. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The clue for round 11 is frozen. Do you want to build a snowman? The clue for round 12 is dessert. Ice cream sundae. The clue for round 13 is holiday. Happy 4th of July. The clue for round 14 is spelling. M I S S I S S I P P I Mississippi. All right, it's round 15, our final round. And for this one, I'm giving you a math problem. The key is that you don't need to tell me what the math problem is. You need to tell me the answer to the math problem. So yell it out when you think you know it. Four. Did you say four? Because that's the answer. It was five plus three minus four, which equals four. Kids, tell me how you did. This is challenging. Trying to be able to read people's lips is not easy, but I'm guessing that most of you did pretty well. And I'm telling you right now, I think this game is going to come back again sometime. So practice if you want to, because next time, I promise you, it will be more challenging. That's all I've got. Back to you, Miss Carrie and that other guy. No, no, no. He is the one who throws the ball, the quarterback. 
So you're not talking about when you say quarterback, you're not referring to a refund no, of getting no, a quarterback. No, from the you. Store? Oh my goodness. And wait, Carrie. when you say safety, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the last, last line, line of defense. Of defense. Yes, yes. So why did my mom teach me safety first? This is exhausting. Oh my I, goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna guess that the reason your mom <laughs> told you that is first of all, safety is important, and second of all, I think maybe she, there's a chance she might be the only person on the planet who lo- knows less about football than you. That's what I'm thinking. Is yeah, I'm, no, I'm not saying she's not wonderful. I'm just saying that explains your confusion about, you know, basically America's sport. Do you know what? I'm glad you brought up my mom because my mom is a worshiper. She oh. loves worshiping Ryan. I'm, I don't. Why do I not we even have any surprise? Yes, we your probably, family you loves the worship. Mm-hmm. We do love the worship. Yes. That's right. So, so when you're saying the worship. Does the ship float or is it a oh, sunken goodness. ship? Okay, we'll no? talk. We'll okay, talk. that was just me trying to get back at her. Okay, you guys, so we've got two songs. I know that's a shock to you. Two songs. The first one is called Stars. We haven't done this in a while. I'm excited about bringing it back. You guys, the God who controls and orchestrates the cosmos. Who spoke them into existence. Spoke them into existence and keeps them all in place. That big, crazy, amazing God. What are you going to say about God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what about God? Do you know, there's... N- the one who makes yeah. gravity exist to have her mask dip down. <laughs> Keep control of that mask, sorry. Okay, back to worship talk. He can handle anything that life throws at us. Oh, I, love I know that. sometimes things come at us and we're like, where did that come from? And we're ducking and diving and we're cowering. But you know what? None of it surprises God. Not he, even a little bit. Not even a little bit. And he he not only knows it's coming, he holds us through it. Mm. He's with us. I love he's that. Got, he's bigger than anything that so comes at us. So this super catchy song that, that we love to dance to, whatever, it also has all these wonderful truths in it. Oh my goodness. Oh That's my goodness. so cool. I God, like that. Don't miss the words of this one. Oh, it's so good. And then we're going to go right into Nothing is Impossible because of obviously. <laughs> Can I so just good. do an old asterisk? I'm starting to think that teaching you football might be impossible, but... I digress. I'm just saying. Okay, sorry. Back back to worship. These are two great songs. I can't wait. I'm going to start stretching. Is that okay? Okay, yes, okay. please do. I don't know why I'm stretching my forearms, but, you know, <laughs> here we go. You spoke a word and life began. Told oceans where to start and where to end. You set in motion time and
time Whenever I fall away Whenever I start to break So here I am Lifting up my heart I, could, I thought we were doing Wednesday, but honestly, Tuesdays is good for me too. Uh, hold on one second, here. I'm sorry, I'm working out some kinks on my new invention. There we go, what much better. In the world, oh, what is Hold on, Phil. Right hold on, now? Phil. Sorry. Listen, I'm talking to Phil on my new invention, and Hi, Phil. hold on. Okay, sorry, Phil. Disregard her. 
Anyway, I am thinking that it would be best if it was just you and I for the first meeting because, you know, wait, the kids could be a distraction. Wait, what is happening right now? This, oh. We did not talk about this. Hold, in, Phil, hold. In Sorry. Planning this thing. is my new invention. It is a string phone that totally deals with, just get, just takes care of the issue of that heavy, bulky phone lifting action You're we have to do. talking about this one? Yes. Are you exhausted? Probably. No. Phil, listen, i tell you what, I'm going to have to call you back, Phil. No, I'm not yeah. exhausted. I'll actually. call you back. Hold on. I'll see you later. There How? we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, anyway, listen. Genius comes to me sometimes late at night. I can't control it. This is one of my doozies. I call this a doozy because I want to make sure I do it. Oh my Meaning, goodness. go public with what? this invention and everyone will not want the string phone. Okay, I'm just, I feel like this is your no, moment. No, no, think just about gonna... it, think about it. Hold on, look at this. I can watch Netflix on here. Cue it up, boom. Oh, hey, oh my goodness. <laughs> look at that. Wow, kids, I'm telling you, this thing has all sorts of applications. You're gonna love it. This is one thing, the cell phone being that one thing, that you want to have a string attached to, trust me. Meanwhile. Are you finished? No, I'm part? queuing up the message because, okay, phones, yes, strings are great. But Grace, oh boy, not good. Is that good enough for you, Miss Kate? What are you no, doing back a there? Really good invention. What wheels on chairs? Chairs on yeah. wheels. Oh my gosh! Listen, you guys enjoy the message. I am gonna go ahead and check my stocks out on this phone as it as it. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Enjoy. Oh, look at this. I am juggling fruit, kids. Yes, we have got some fruit because today. We're gonna talk about some fruit, kids. We're not just gonna talk about grace and not attaching strings to it, but today we're gonna to talk specifically about fruit. Now, let me take a second before we get into this so I can just tell you just some review, okay? So kids, we've been talking about grace, the incredible gift that God gives us, we can't earn it, of his love, his grace, and his mercy. This incredible, wonderful, amazing gift, okay? Now, we've talked about how sometimes People from church that mean well will start to tell people, yeah, you know, we're saved by grace, this gift from God, but you need to do some stuff to kind of prove you're saved. And hopefully by now you get, that can't be the case. You can't take grace and add works to it, things that we do, right? It's like taking the word free and adding money to it. It no longer is free. The same way, grace is no longer grace if people tell you you have to do things to earn God's love. So we've talked a lot about grace, and last week we talked about some of the danger that, that uh, believing in this, this string-attached grace will do. It'll, it'll make us into people that try and act one way when really we aren't the same way on the inside, and it'll make us see God as this God who's very kind of judgmental and conditional as he looks down on us like, hmm, are you behaving well? And these are both really destructive things. But this week, I wanna talk about some really, really good stuff, which brings me to the fruit. Okay? One of the books we've been looking at a lot is the book of Galatians because Paul talks to a church who's struggling with this. People are coming to them and saying, I heard you believe in grace, which is great, but you need to do some things as well. And Paul's like, uh-uh, nonsense. Don't you dare believe these people that are trying to attach gr uh, works or strings to grace. The first four chapters of the book of Galatians, that is, it is, very, very, very heavy in talking about do not add works to grace. But in the fifth chapter, it talks about fruit. And I wanna to read to you guys what it says in Galatians chapter five, verse 22. It says, the Holy Spirit that works within us, it produces this kind of fruit in our lives. It says love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are all incredible things. I'm telling you right now, kids, if you tell me that, that someone's offering love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, I'm like, hey, sign me up. I want some more of that fruit in my life. I can tell you with complete sincerity, kids, the more that I find myself loving other people, the more I find myself uh, filled with joy and peace and patience and, and all the other things that are on this list, the more I find myself going, hey, I'm loving the direction my life is headed. This is what Paul is saying. He's promising us that God's spirit will work within us to create these things, which is a beautiful, wonderful promise. But it's also a dangerous one. 
Let me explain. You see, for years, people have taken this passage that talks about how God will work in us to grow these things, and they've made people insecure about whether or not they're actually Christians. I've heard people say, well, hey, why don't you go ahead and show me your fruit? I mean, are you really a Christian, right? How, how loving are you? How much joy do you have in your life? How much peace and patience? Because, you know, if you don't have that fruit, then clearly you don't have the Holy Spirit working in you and maybe you're not a Christian, which to me sounds like some really nasty strings. Now, here's the deal. Do I want this fruit in my life? Oh, more than you can imagine. Do I want it for you? Absolutely. This fruit is amazing. And I do truly, deeply believe that God works in us to do this. It says so in his word. But here's the problem I have. When we begin to start judging people based upon their outward actions as to how much of this exists in their life, it's dangerous. And when we begin to start to judge ourselves, it creates uncertainty. It creates um, a kind of a nervousness within us. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not a Christian. And you tell me, does that kind of thinking make you draw closer to God or further from God? In my experience, it makes me draw further from God because I'm almost ashamed at times. Oh, I don't see enough fruit in my lives, in my life. I only have one life in my life. So listen, let me try and explain. The same way that different people grow at different rates in different things, that's how it is with this fruit. If you've ever watched, uh, you know, different people trying to learn a skill, not everyone grows at the same rate. If you've ever tried to, to learn how to ski or to play an instrument or maybe to, to paint or, or to do any other skill, certain people will grow faster and quicker and be better at things before others. That's how I believe it is in our life. There's certain ones of these things that you might grow quicker in than others. Meanwhile, there's certain areas where you might be like, oh, when am I gonna get more patient? I mean, I'm so impatient. I see it affect my life in so many ways. Kids, here's what I want you to get. Just trust the natural process. You, the, the goal as for us as Christians shouldn't it be at, go out and chase these things as if I need them to prove something. I should absolutely desire to be more patient and more generous and more kind and all these wonderful things that God wants for us. But the greatest way for me to grow those, according to what I read in John 15, which is a book about, it's a, it's a chapter about the vine and the branches. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branch. And he says, if you abide in me, if you, if you rest in me, you'll bear much fruit. You see, for me, the biggest revelation I ever got when it came to being more fruitful, it came when I stopped trying to chase these behaviors. Oh, I'm gonna try and be more patient. I'm gonna try and be more loving, which of course I want to try to be those things. But the best and most effective way to do that is to constantly rest and remind myself in the fact that I am loved by God. He is the vine and it is only by trusting and resting in the fact that I'm, a, a, what it says in John 15 is abide in his love, which means just set up shop and rest and trust in the fact that we are loved by God. It's when that happens that I believe you'll begin to see the most growth in your life. Do not let people turn these beautiful fruits into those nasty strings. Got it kids? It's super important. I'm hoping this is something you can just hold on to because over the course of your life, people will do it. They will take this and somehow try and turn this delicious apple into a string. And we don't want that. And this delicious lemon, just kidding. Wait, you peel these, right? Davida? Okay, I'm gonna peel that one and probably not eat it because it's still gross. Kids, I'm gonna finish this food. You guys go, have a great day. Thanks a lot. You know what, Ryan, I thought, mm -hmm. I, I ignorantly thought that the best time of the year was Christmas. <laughs> but what did we learn this past weekend? Well, that the best time of the year is the time you're about to tell the kids about. Live on the lawn yeah! event. Yeah, so fun. Live you know? on the lawn event. Oh my, it was phenomenal hey. with the emphasis on. Fun. fun. Phenomenal. Also, I'm gonna just say, I loved it. Like, you I find did. myself you loving did. a lot more things lately. I, I'm not sure why, but okay. it's having this effect on me. <laughs> you look very just content and at peace. Oh right my now. goodness, I feel like I'm just wrapped in a blanket of love. You are, you know, these blankets, you guys, oh, these yeah. are some of the ones that you helped us make. Yeah! We're going to the families it. at the hospital, you know, just to bring some comfort, some... I'm sorry, some... I don't get to keep this? No, and by the way, it's a lap 
blanket. A lap, it's, this is, it's, this, it's is my, kind of this is my this is my cocoon right here. I'm all cozied up in here, kids. Listen, when I break out of this bad boy, I'm gonna be a butterfly, a majestic monarch butterfly. Mm. But it's gonna be a manarch. I'm gonna be a manarch butterfly. I'm gonna spread my wings is and it fly. Is gonna happen soon? Cause I feel like I want to be here when it happens. Oh my goodness. Maybe it'll be happening, you know, before you know. <laughs> I don't know when the kids get back from this next segment. Who knows? But maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Either way, I just I gotta figure out how I can get into that hospital so I can make sure this blanket stays with me. <laughs> oh my can I get goodness. checked in for a seriously stubbed toe? Security? We need security. Okay, listen, kids. You know, oh check out God. how much fun we had at Live on the Lawn while I stay here and just love life. <laughs> It's happening, Miss. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Miss Carrie. Uh, I mean, th that video spoke yes, a to thousand see, words. To see all the love and care that those kids put into uh, my cocoon makes it, me very happy. Thank you, kids. Ryan, it wasn't for you. What? <laughs> no. It's for it's for this guy, the butterfly, <laughs> kids. Look, I'm soaring through the air. I'm so, oh. So sorry you had to. That. Is, that was a lot. Don't apologize. That was a lot. Don't apologize. This oh is this is goodness. great, kids. I feel like a whole new man. I feel like I'm ready. Who? I mean, up until this point, Rancho Kids Show was the old me. And now, moving forward, midway through season four, look at what this happened. This is what happens. I blossomed. Whoa. <laughs> Yes, the parents might get that one, but no kids will. Listen, we've had a blast. Oh, a hoot. A hoot and a yes, half, yep. always. I love it. We are it's such so big good. fans of you kids. And for those of you guys that are on there chatting every day, we love it. That's and if you great. haven't done that, give it a shot. Hey, and you guys think you're here to watch us. We're really here to watch you. That's why we come, right? We I'm trying show to do the two finger. Day. I think so. we're watching you guys. I love it. It's fun. Tell your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the new channel. A lot of you guys subscribe to the old channel, but you haven't subscribed to the new channel yet. Make sure you do that because we're trying to spread the word. That's right. We don't we don't want anyone to miss out on all of all of this. Life lessons. Should we just, should we just <laughs> let them go? That's what I think we should. Alright. Oh, this is me letting them go. No. I don't know what that.